hello everybody just a couple of things before we start um, I have the video turned the camera turned around so I can't oops, see your comments um, so I'm gonna be looking at them on my phone instead hopefully hopefully I hope everybody had a good weekend um, hopefully I can find it on my phone I had a busy weekend I was in the shop for oh I don't know about eight hours yesterday trying to finish up last minute stuff um, yesterday, <sighs> there we are. So, hopefully. You guys join me today for the quilt along. Uh, there might be a little bit of a delay as far as um, comments because I'm looking at it on my phone. But, okay. Hello. Now that we're pretty much set up, um, welcome to the first of hopefully approximately 10 weeks of lessons for Stitch Happens, which is a lot of fun. Um, I did the pattern in uh, pretty fast. It's not really a difficult pattern. There's a few um, difficult spots, but it's not hard really. Um, first thing I gotta tell you is have fun, okay? Don't worry about it being perfect because um, part of this is just to have fun and learn new things. Nobody is going to be looking at it and pointing out your mistakes. And like I tell everybody, if somebody does, they're not your friend. <laughs> just enjoy it. Um, it's a good pattern to use your stash. So go shopping in your stash and see what you have. Um, I cut everything up in a matter of maybe five hours or so, cut all for two kits. So the one that I was doing here and the one to do for class. Um, so it's not gonna take you long. Um, the pattern, you have to have the pattern because I'm not gonna tell you the sizes, but it is very easy and just, it's not difficult. There's a couple of spots that might be difficult and I'm gonna try and work you through it, um, including where to press your seams to make it as easy as you, for you as possible. Um, all you really need for this lesson is a ruler, a marking pen, your machine, and some scissors. That's pretty much all you're going to need for this once you have everything cut. Um, I think that's it. If you have any questions or comments, just post them and I will get to you as soon as possible. Once I'm done with the Facebook Live, I will post the video to YouTube. For those of you that are not on Facebook, so you can see it also. And um, I think it came out really nice. I had a lot of fun doing it. Um, it can be a wall hanging because as it stands right now, it is approximately 37 by 40. It could be the center of a lap quilt for you. Or it could be, um, I've even heard of and seen it done as a machine cover to cover your machine. Just have fun. Um, you're going to learn a lot of different techniques. There's two different ways of doing um, flying geese in this quilt. And it's just, it's fun. It really is fun. Okay, so if, without further ado, and there is no uh, questions or comments so far, um, I'm hoping that you can hear me, no problem. So if you don't mind, maybe somebody can post that um, you hear me okay and everything's all right. Uh, one thing for sure, okay, if your quarter inch seam isn't 
exact, not too many people have an exact quarter inch seam. You know, some of the measurements are gonna be off a little bit as far as like the white frame. It's probably gonna be a little bit longer than you actually need. No big deal, we'll trim it up afterwards. Um, I don't see any comments, so I'm assuming you guys can hear me okay. All right, let's get to it. The first block we're gonna do is, uh, let's see, this one. This one right here, which is the end of the arm of the embroidery, of the uh, sewing machine, okay? So, basically, what you're gonna do is take your long blue piece, and you've got two white squares. So we're gonna put them on each end and make sure you've got the front of the white on white because I did do that wrong at one point and I guess what, I left it in there because I didn't feel like unstitching it and realistically, I don't think it can tell where it is. So it's staying right where it is. All right, what we're gonna do All right, so you're gonna put the two white ones on each end, and you're gonna draw a line from this corner to this corner. They are right sides together. So from this corner to this corner, and from this corner to this corner, and you're gonna stitch just a hair's breadth on the other side of the line. And I'll show you what I mean. Anybody that wants to comment and let me know that you can hear me or if you can see me okay, I'd appreciate it. Because this is a new way of doing it for me and I'm not quite sure looking at it on my phone if I'm going to be able to see the comments. The reason I'm doing it this way is so that when you look at the video, you're seeing it um, right, right side to right side. Um, what I mean is my left is actually going to be my left on the, on the video. But there you go. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew just a thread length on this side of the line. Same thing down here. You're going to sew just a thread length on this side. And the reason I do that, as far as sewing just a thread length on the other side, is to give my corner um, a nice crisp edge so it will fold all the way to the corner. go now I hopefully you can see the line so you see the line I sew just on the ins on the other side of that line and the reason I do that is so when I flip it up it's gonna reach all the way to the corner now traditionally I probably wouldn't cut this corner off um, but I did in this case because there's so much white on this quilt that I didn't want too many dark patches to show up so um, I did cut the excess off just to get rid of the bulk now important thing with this quilt what I um, 
recommend is I recommend using Best Press heavily in this quilt. There's a lot of little pieces and the Best Press is going to help you keep everything um, from pulling and twisting and moving too much. Um, with When you're working with a lot of little pieces, the starch actually really does help keep everything nice and straight. Um, and there are a few places where you have some really tiny piecing here. So we're going to set the seam first, which means you just press it folded as uh, real quick. And then you iron it up. And you're ironing towards the corner, so the seam will be towards the white. Oh, I'm sorry, we should have done that the other way. I try as much as possible with this quilt to um, iron towards the dark so that it doesn't show up on the front as a shadow underneath the white. That isn't always possible with this quilt, and I'll um, tell you when we can't and why as we go along. Okay, so there was our first piece. Okay, then we're gonna take the large white piece and you're gonna right sides together, sew it on this side. again this time we're going to put the big piece on what on top of white so that when we press it over the seams on actually I'm sorry I did that wrong you put the darker smaller piece on top that way when you press it over the seam is on the dark side Now this first lesson is going to be pretty quick. Some of them are going to be a little bit longer um, when we get into a few of the other blocks that are a little bit more um, involved. But this one is fairly easy. missing a piece. I knew that was going to happen. Oh, no, I'm not. Okay, never mind. Duh. <laughs> okay, so the next part we're going to do is this half square here and this half square here. And the pieces are larger than these two squares right here. And that's so that when we we're only going to do one big square on the top and one big square on the bottom. And when you draw the line and cut them and stitch them, they'll shrink down to this size. And we're making two half square triangles at one time. So you're just going to lay them on top of each other and draw a, long, a line diagonally from corner to corner. And then what we're going to do is stitch a quarter of an inch on either side of this line. And when you cut on, on the line when you're done, you'll have two half square triangles. Now if you have a quarter inch foot with the guide, all you need to do is put the 
guide part on the line. Now, you're going to do whatever feels comfortable for you, but uh, I've been doing this for a long time, and basically what I do is I don't even, I stitch down one side, I don't even cut the thread, I just take it out, turn it, and keep on stitching without cutting the thread. You're going to be doing, uh, have the opportunity to be doing a lot more um, chain stitching with this quilt, and I'll show you how I do it. Um, so that you can see it and try it. Unfortunately, I lost comments. So if anybody is commenting, I'm sorry if I don't respond. I will respond as soon as I'm done. Um, but back to chain piecing. I'll show you how I do it. And uh, the reason I chain piece is because it saves time. And every little bit, as far as my schedule is concerned, helps. So all I did was take it, pull it out. Turn it around. See, I still have my strings attached. And put it back in and stitch the other side of the line. Now, you can cut this with a rotary cutter or I just use a scissor. So now we're gonna cut down the line that we drew. And I'm gonna trim off my excess threads. I ironed it so that the darker blue is on top. So if we set the seam with the darker blue on top and then fold it over, the seam will be on the dark side. And again, I would definitely use best press throughout the entire process on this quilt. Now, traditionally, I would not cut off my dog my dog ears. That's the little corners here, um, because I find when I'm sewing, they actually help me line up my stitching. But that being said, there's an awful lot of little pieces with this quilt, so. Um, I, I am cutting my dog ears off just to cut down on the bulk. Okay, now, hopefully you can see my desk or my table. This is what we'll do just to make sure you can see what I'm doing. So now what we're gonna do, we just, we have the first part that we've created. We have our two half square triangles. We have our dark navy blue and our lavender color. And by the way, you can do this in any colors you want. I would use a neutral background um, just to make sure that it shows up. But as long as you keep notes and even make maybe make a, a fabric key for yourself on what colors and that you're doing in what section, the pattern even comes with like a coloring section. So if you wanted to make a copy of it or a few copies and with some colored pencil, draw in, you know, color in, the different squares that's fine you don't have to use the colors that they that they um, are telling you to use but so basically we're gonna stitch this to this and this to this and then we're gonna stitch these two sections together 
And what I did is I'm going to chain piece. Yes, I did get a few things wrong when I was doing this, but that's better for you, believe it or not, because then I can tell you what to watch out for. Um, one of the big things you really need to do with this quilt is be real consistent with your, with your seams. And what I mean is, now as far as chain stitching, all I'm doing is just going to not cut my threads from the first set that I sewed together and just work start stitching the second set now what I mean as far as seams um, there are a lot of seams there's a lot of small piecing see that's chain stitching there's a lot of small pieces with this quilt and if you want to make sure that it lays nice and flat be pretty consistent with your seams and be real cognizant of them um, meaning when you're stitching a bunch of pieces together that are already stitched make sure your seams when they go in are as nice and flat and go in the way that you want them to now with these pieces I am ironing the seam to the whole square. So when you do that, if I lay the one on top, the lighter one where I want the seam to be, and open it, the seam will go how you want it to. So just keep that in mind. Set the seam, iron it, And press. Best press really is going to help you out a lot in this quilt. And I keep on putting it back down, um, especially when you have a lot of little pieces where it needs to go. That's just so that I know what I'm supposed to be doing because. It's very easy in this quilt. Now we're going to take these two pieces and sew them together. And it's very easy to sew them the wrong way. I did it a few times, especially when I was in here late. Now, I ironed it, the seam, this way, back towards that dark full square. I'm going to set the seam and iron it. And then we're going to best press. Okay, now all we have to do is sew our two pieces together. So they should look like this. And you're just going to sew them together. I'm doing is picking up my foot every once in a while when I come to my seam to make sure it lays the way I want it to and it doesn't get moved. And 
Now, is it going to be exact? No, but I'm okay with that. Now, with the small piece on top, that's where we're going to set the seam and iron it up. There you go. You're well on your way to your first, to, the, to finishing this quilt we just started. So first block is done. Um, I will answer any questions you have uh, if you post them to me. Sorry about that. Still working on the whole video aspect. And hopefully you could see everything fine and hear me fine. And I promise by next week, I will have the whole comment situation worked out. So that's it for today. And if you still need a pattern, please pick one up. You can pick one up for me or anybody else. I don't, you know, it doesn't really matter to me. But this really is going to be a lot of fun. And I hope you enjoy it. And I hope this is just the first of many uh, quilt alongs that we do for now. That's all I have, and I hope you have a great week. And the next video will be next Monday at 10 a.m. So have a nice day, everybody. Bye.